I was recruited by extremist groups. I became a recruiter. And then I became an undercover counterterrorism operative, uh, infiltrating terrorist cells and extremist groups. What I'm gonna say to you is, is from the basis of, on the basis of my own experience as an extremist, but also as an operative, watching other young people go down the road that I should not have gone down. If you don't think you can be recruited or your friends can be recruited by groups like ISIS, think again. Social media is a, is a hunting ground. They're looking for young girls just like you. You're spending so many hours by yourself, you know, 14, 15 hours a day online. It is an invitation into your home. They see what kind of vulnerabilities you have, and then they pounce. And you're seeing these guys online and they got long hair and they look nice and they're carrying guns and they look like heroes. And so they try to develop a personal relationship with you. You know, and then they become, they become jihadi boyfriends. I was born and raised in Canada, very normal life. I wasn't picked on or bullied in high school. Um, but for, you know, I had an identity conflict. I would go to Quran school in the evening. I would go to public school during the day. And it was a huge contrast for me. And I was asking myself, if I step too much into this world, does that mean I'm selling out my culture? Am I turning my back on my own people, quote unquote? It caused a lot of stress for me. And I was so vulnerable at that point. In the face of the dark wave of the Crusader force, the historical land of two rivers bore life to a mission that would transform the political landscape of the world. This is their bread and butter, the grievance narrative. You see, this is what's happening to your people. And who's doing it? It's the evil West. And what they try to tell you is the West is everybody. Anyone that is not like them is a target. From the Muhajireen, on the other hand, came the believers who would rebuild the Khilafah. They the video looks really good. The songs sound really nice. The graphics, the imagery, everything, it's, it's like a Hollywood movie. You can hear the bullets flying overhead, just like a first-person shooter game makes you feel like you're a special operator, you know, you're ghost ops, you're black ops doing your call of duty. And then a few weeks later, they'll put out another video. And they do this deliberately. It's to keep you entertained. It's to keep you locked in, always expecting the next thing that ISIS is gonna do. Whether it's how they're gonna kill somebody this time, you're gonna keep engaging them in conversation to see, well, could it really be as crazy as they're depicting it? Pop culture is their weapon. They speak the language you speak. They take those images from video games that you play and just stick their message onto it. But what they do is they give you a sense of purpose. They tell you, well, listen, what are you doing with your life? They make you feel bad that you're sitting at home while people across the oceans are suffering and dying, 
and that you need to get up and do something about it. My, my story of how I was recruited, I was 17. I was 17 and I called up my friends and I said, hey, my parents are gone, let's have a party. But what I didn't know was my dad had told my uncle to check on the house while he was gone. So you can imagine, yep, in the middle of the party, my uncle walks in. And my uncle's very religious um, and he made me feel so guilty and so bad about what I had done. You know, people pray in this house, Mubin, how could you do this? You know, you dishonored the family, you, you defiled the home. I thought to myself, the only way I can fix this is if I get religious. Because I looked into my culture and I could see that people who were overt, overtly religious, you know, we respected them. One of the options that was given to me was I could go to India and Pakistan for four months and really immerse myself in the religious tradition. I'm your brother in Islam here in Syria. I originally come from Canada. I watched hockey. I went to the cottage in the summertime. I love to fish. I wanted to go hunting. Then, alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided me from the darkness of kufr to the light of Iman, to Islam. Andre Poulin is a, a Canadian uh, from Timmins. You know, he went over to join ISIS, and then he was featured in a, in a recruiting video. Uh, called the chosen few, you know, special people, right? So the chosen of the chosen. And then for effect, the ultimate effect, what they did is they followed him into the battlefield and they made him run by himself this long distance. And of course, he was shot and killed. They orchestrated his death for the purposes of a recruiting video. They cherry pick verses of fighting and killing. They will never give it in the entire context. And chapter nine, verse five is the the, the, the most often quoted verse. It says, you know, uh, kill the unbelievers wherever you find them. They told me, they said, look, that this is what the verse says. I didn't speak any Arabic, so I believe them. But when I went to study Arabic, I learned that the word is not unbeliever. The word is mushrikeen, which refers to uh, pagans and polytheists. It talks about those polytheists who, with whom you made an agreement of non-aggression, but they broke the treaty. So it's talking about a small group of people, pagans, who were fighting the Muslims at that time after they had made a ceasefire. Nobody knew who you were. Nobody asked for your opinion. Nobody thought you were smart or you were anything. but suddenly you become Muslim and the people love you. And they say, oh brother, you know, sister, you become a Muslim and they shower you with praise and, and love and you feel so good and you don't want to disappoint them. July 1995, in Pakistan, I go to a place near the border of Afghanistan. I see these guys, they have beards, they have robes. They also had AK-47s, machine guns, 
rocket propelled grenades. And they said to me, they said, look, you know, kid, you know, if, if you want to bring change in the world, you do it with this. And he held up his AK-47. And that for me was, was everything. It, it showed me that I could be a hero. From that moment, uh, I began to, to believe in what they were telling me. I returned back to Canada, and I was very politically active, uh, very, very political speech. I would go to the mosque, or I would go to the school to see who was the convert, and I would look to see what's the, I would ask them, how's your situation with your family? And if they said to me, oh, my family doesn't like the fact that I'm a Muslim, I knew that I could recruit this kid, and I did recruit kids just like that. I, I feel bad about the recruiting that I did when I was young. There was no social networking, really. I mean, there was Yahoo chat, there were some chat forums, but it's the exact same thing that you're seeing now. Salam alaikum, my beautiful. Will you be by my side soon? Wa alaikum salam. I'm almost ready. Okay, well, now that I see you, now that I know what you look like, you know, a little bit of chit chat, this and that. So, are you serious about coming? And they will hold your hand every step of the way. Do you have your tickets? Yes, to Calgary and then Amsterdam and then Istanbul, just like you said. You know, steal your mom's credit card, go and buy a ticket, make sure you have your passport. Uh, here's a number to call when you get to such and such airport. Once you get to this city, call this number. Somebody will come and meet you at the airport. Yes, I'll be in Turkey before they know I'm gone. Soon we will be together, inshallah. If you're a male, either you're gonna be a fighter or you're gonna be a suicide bomber. Um, for women, I mean, what, what option do you think you have? You're there to, to make babies for this so-called Islamic State. You know, when the 9-11 attacks happened, the first words out of my mouth were, Allahu Akbar, you know, God is the greatest. You know, America finally got what, what, what came, what was coming to them. I thought, I, I can go to Syria and be there in case the Great War does kick off. And, you know, I spent time in Syria. I studied the religion properly. I realized Islam is not about terrorism. And then I became an undercover counterterrorism operative, uh, infiltrating terrorist cells and extremist groups. I returned back to Canada, and my job was to be next to that guy and that guy think that I'm his buddy, that I'm his jihadi buddy, and for me to collect the information on what he's saying, what he's doing, what he's planning. A lot of Western foreign fighters who went there, they've just been sent off to die as cannon fodder. I thank God, truly, that I left in 2004. Uh, may, I was there 10 years too early, but I'm very happy that I'm no longer there and, and that I did come home. <laughs> The reality of the living conditions when you get there is not what they show on the brochure. It's not what you see on the videos. There's no clean water, electricity once in a while, medical care very poor. Young Westerners, young teenagers who've gone over, who've realized um, this is not what I signed up for, or oh my God, uh, I, you know, I'm not, I don't want to do this anymore. You think they're just going to let you leave? 
they just get shot in the back of the head and they'll keep tweeting. And they'll keep tweeting like you're alive and then they'll create some fictional way in which you died to make you like the hero uh, that you wanted to be. One of the things that I've been doing online especially is talking to some of these uh, ISIS supporters and trying to bring them out of joining ISIS or no longer being a part of ISIS. It's not the, the, the glorified, you know, combat life from video games and from Hollywood. It's, it's bad. That's, that's the reality. Maybe you need to see the pictures and videos for yourself to believe it because they're out there.